Hello guys, thank you very much for joining in. We're going to be starting out with this chapter, Volatility Smiles. Okay, now this chapter is basically uh, in connection with your lef FRM level one Black Scholes model chapter. Because in that chapter, we talked about implied volatility that has been heavily discussed in this chapter. And the base of the chapter is that whether we, how exactly the BSA model that we have learned, okay, is it used in the market in a similar way or not, okay? Further, uh, if you read this chapter only from Swisher, there were certain diagrams which can help you to understand things in a better way is not available in that book. Hence, I'll be running up a PPT also along with the same. Okay. Now, what is the agenda of this chapter? The chapter summary, okay, primarily that how close are the market price as compared to the predicted by the Black Scholes model? We know that every time the Black Scholes model price for call input that we get, okay, the real market price does not match because it is a modeled price and real price will always be different. There'll be some error in case, okay. And the intention of this entire topic is that how exactly trader are using BSM? Are they using it directly to price the option or are they using it in a very different way that has been discussed in this chapter? And in two products, we're going to be talking about FX and equity. How exactly the probability distribution of log normal, which is assumed in the Black Scholes model and primarily the implied volatility distribution. We're going to be comparing both of them and we'll see about this for two different products that is equity and foreign exchange, foreign currency market. Okay. So if you go to the first section of this chapter, they're they talking about volatility smiles. Okay. They're talking about volatility smiles for call and put. Okay. Now, what exactly is this volatility smile? I'll come, I'll talk about this in few minutes. Okay. But before that, we are going to look at the put call parity. Okay, put call parity. Now, if you look at the basic structure of the put call parity, was this. Okay, but if there is an income, if there is an income on the underlying asset, then it becomes like this. Q represents income. You cannot take directly S0. You'll have to reduce it with the income. This was there in slight inter introduction in your FRM level one also. And if you read the, if you look at the PPT, which I'm running, they have also added it over here because there is a dividend yield. Now, even, even if in our discussion, there is no dividend yield, it will not make much any of a difference, but they have, since they have taken it from the Institute book, I have, I have like to put my words on that. Okay. So it's basically Q, which talks about the dividend yield. There is an income in terms of percentage on the underlying asset. Okay. Now they're comparing two different things. Okay. The first thing is that if suppose, if suppose we look at the uh, Black Scholes model or sorry, the put call parity with respect to the uh, primarily uh, the BSM structure, then it should look like this. Okay. Now we are expl I'm explicitly writing BSM over here because I wanted to highlight that the price that we are receiving is from BSM. We can compare it. We can compare it with the same structure. Okay. But with the market price. So if, the, if that is the case, it will look like this. Okay. Now this is your equation one. And this is your equation two. Okay. Now they have taken the difference between these two equations. And when you take the difference between these two equations, your, this part would ideally go. Okay. And the only thing that will remain on the left hand side is the difference between the Black Scholes model price of the put option and the real market price of the put option. Similarly, on the right hand side, the difference between the Black Shoes model call option price and the market price of the call. Okay. Now I am writing it in this way. Now I have written, when I look at this equation, I have written the market price first. Now this can also be inverse. See if the, now why am I writing it in this way? 
to help you understand that if suppose the market price of the put is higher okay then as compared to the model price then your call price will also be higher as compared to the model price it can be inverse also it can be your black scholes model price being higher as compared to your market price that can also be the scenario okay but what does this equation this third equation which we have found what does it talk about what does it highlights okay that the pricing error between pricing error between the put is similar to the pricing error for call okay so whatever answer that we have got from black scholes model and the difference between the real price the difference is same for the call and for the put this is the first thing that we have identified okay this is an important section okay now think logically think logically when we talk about black scholes model we have taken so many assumptions that the underlying distribution is log normal the risk free rate is known and known with certainty volatility is known with certainty this was a very strong assumption and since we are talking about a chapter is focusing on volatility my discussion is going to be on that assumptions of on that one assumption of black black scholes model which said that the volatility is going to be constant and it is known from the start okay now what we have done what we have done is when we calculated this put price or when we calculated this call price when we calculated this call price we had taken a, a certain volatility into the calculation but the real volatility is is getting covered in the actual market price okay now think logically if while calculating my put price or while calculating my uh, call price using the black scholes model if i have used implied volatility what was implied volatility the real current volatility then this gap will become zero do you all agree with that if i take implied volatility into my calculation directly then there should be no pricing error fairly simple okay so two two important points to remember till here okay two important points first point the pricing error which we get for put option will always be equal to the pricing error to the call option okay the second important point being if i use implied volatility in my actual bsm formula then it will it should exactly match it should exactly match my put market price of the option and as the difference will become zero okay there is one more important section which i wanted to highlight over here in our discussion suppose i write like this that means my current market price of the put is higher than the bsm price that means the implied volatility implied volatility was slightly higher as compared to the historical volatility that i have used in the model okay so on the this is my lhs this is my left hand side right so my right hand side will also have my call market price being higher than the call bsm price you have to remember this or you have to understand because your implied volatility is high because your implied volatility high, is high your put price is going to be higher than the bsm price the similar logic will also flow for the call price being higher for the call market price being higher than the call uh, bsm part okay this leads to me this leads to a third point a third important uh, understanding that the implied volatility implied volatility of put is actually equal to the implied volatility of call okay i will ask you guys i will take you guys towards the ppt and also to towards the uh, discussion over here in the book so if i take you towards the ppt they have i've they've done the similar part they have done this first equation taking bsm formula okay they have taken the market price which is your second equation okay and then they have taken the difference and if you read this line if you read this line which talks about that the dollar pricing error okay dollar pricing error for put option is also going to be the dollar pricing error for the call option this was the first important understanding that we had then there is one more important understanding which is being given over here which 
talks about that implied volatility of call is equal to the implied volatility of the put option. I want you guys to read that two paragraph. All good. Going back to the dis discussion once again, since the pricing, Sanjana answering to your query, since the pricing between the put market price, this gap is same. This gap is same. The implied volatility, whatever I'm going to put into the put BSM put formula, which will make me closer toward the market price should also be equal to the call, call implied volatility because if I put implied volatility into my call BSM formula, it will also bring me closer to the call price. So the implied volatility of call and put is same because the pricing error is same. Right, Sanjana? Taking you guys towards the book, the same concept has been explained over there. Same concept has been explained over there. First, they have talked about the put call parity. Okay. And ex explicitly they are saying that, okay, what is this present value of X? We have seen this in put call parity, right? They have written it in a very different way. The structure is basic structure is this, but they've just made it slightly inverse in terms of they have just changed the formula, but the basic uh, intention or the logic is still same. Okay. Now, if you read the book part or the swagger part, okay, read this section. Now this is explained in just two or three lines, but the actual uh, understanding is, is better explained in the PPT. Read this paragraph, this entire paragraph. They're talking about the two points, the dollar pricing error and the implied volatility. Both of them are being explained over here. Okay. They've, they've got the first equation, they've got the second and they've taken the difference, which is this. All good till here, give me a quick confirmation on chat so that we can move towards the next section. Fairly simple. Now over here, see at the start of the, of this discussion of this learning objective, we talked about volatility smiles. Okay. So over here, they've just given a brief about it. What does, ex what exactly is volatility smile? I will be talking about it now. So in a very simple language, what they are doing, what they're doing is on, they're creating a graph. They're creating a graph with the X axis being the strike price. And the Y axis being implied volatility. So in a simple language, what they're doing is if suppose we have the BSM formula, okay, how do we find implied volatility? So we have the BSM formula in that formula, you have T, you have R, you have Sigma, right? You have a lot of things S zero, you have K. Okay. And then what you do is on the left-hand side, you take the option price, which is market price. Right. And you skip the Sigma. Okay. And you put everything into that formula and you find the implied volatility. Now think about this. I'm finding Sigma every time. Okay. But I'm, I'll keep on changing the strike price. Suppose if I'm putting the first strike price is 30. Okay. I will get an implied volatility. I'll put it over here. I'll put, I'll take the second implied, uh, the strike price is 31, 32, 33, 34. I will keep on getting the different, different, uh, what do you say? The vol implied volatility. Okay. Now generally, generally what we see, okay. And we are I'm explicitly referring to the foreign currency product. We see something like this, something like this. Okay. Which basically means, which basically means the implied volatility is very low over here, but
But as we move towards this part and this part, implied volatility increases. That is why it is termed or it is named as smiles. Because it looks like a smile. Okay. This is generally for your currency product. But if you look at your equity product, okay, the behavior will look like this. Same on the x-axis, you have the strike price. On the y-axis, you have the implied volatility. Okay. You find something like this. So the structure is same. The logic is same. Only thing is at a very low strike price, we find the implied volatility being very higher and the very high strike price implied volatility being very low. So it, it is called as volatility skew. It is called as volatility skew. I'll take you towards the book now to read the content. I want you guys to read the content over here and connect to two points, volatility smiles and volatility skews. These two points are again going to come in detail. Can you read that paragraph? Okay, I'm assuming everybody has been able to read the content. Smile exists for different products also, but in the exam, we have, we have focused on only two products. Hence, I'm referring to FX. Okay, in this paragraph, they have given you general. They have not explicitly talked about FX or equity, which is going to cover in the further part. Which line you are referring to? This line, Bhavya? Okay. So in many cases, so the basic version of volatility smiles, the basic version of volatility smile is based is that on the x-axis, you have the strike price. On the y-axis, you have the implied volatility. But in many cases, in many cases, you will find this. Instead of in the, on the x axis, instead of strike taking strike price, you take strike divided by S0. Okay, and there is an implied volatility. There is a logic for the same. There is a logic for the same, which is going to come in the further part of the chapter. I'll cover, cover over there. Okay, Bhavya? Okay, I am assuming that everybody is with me till here if yes then let us let us solve this question let us solve this question so jerry is an analyst which estimates the current stock volatility being at 34% and he has using this as an input he got uh, he does he calculated the uh, black scholes model european call price which is nothing but your 6.95 okay however the market price was higher this is your market price, which is 7.23. Okay. And for the same maturity, same strike price and same underlying asset, the price as per the European put price or as per the European call, uh, sorry, uh, the BSM formula is basically 5.2. So basically this is your 5.2. So they are asking you to find what is the market price of the put. Can you guys find this X? Can you guys find this X? This X has to be higher. This X has to be higher than 5.12. So both of this goes out. Shivam, why are you getting answer A? Which is likely to be nearest to the market price. Is it D? A lot of people are saying D will cross check. Yes. The answer is D. 
A cannot be your answer because this part has to be higher to maintain equality, right? So it has to be greater than five point one two. Perfect. So your A and B cannot be the answer either. It has to be C or D, and your answer is five point one two. Okay. So this is just one type of question that you can expect in the exam. Let us go towards the foreign currency option. Now I want everybody's proper attention over here. because there are these diagrams are not available in your book okay so what is happening over here is uh, the basic black scholes model it assumes that the underlying data follows a log normal distribution and what we are doing is we have taken the implied volatility and we have taken the distribution of implied volatility okay so you will find there are you will find a diagram okay which i have just zoomed in which is connecting back your implied and the log normal distribution okay now can we see when we look at the distribution can we see that the both the tails on both the tail side the implied volatility is higher as compared to your log normal distribution can we see that can we see that and this is explicitly for foreign currency huh? this is explicitly for the foreign currency now every time when you hear about foreign currency volatility smiles chapter foreign currency this image should come to your mind that the, the implied volatility is having a fatter tail on both the side now how are they explaining it to you okay so look at this k2 suppose i am talking about a call option call option with a strike price of k2 okay k2 is very high k2 is at a very higher end that means my call option is out of the money deep out of the money do you all agree with that logic okay i'll i'll connect it back suppose my strike price is over here and my s0 is over here very at the at the lower side then can i say this call option is if i'm talking about a call option this call option is deep out of the money right perfect now if i come back to this diagram think about this this k2 is my strike price this k2 is my strike price i am zooming in more okay k2 is my strike price now for so what investors are looking at for the deep out of the money call option investors or basically people by looking at the diagram we can realize that the implied volatility is higher on the tail that means there is greater probability of being in the money for the call option greater probability of being in the money for the call option kindly keep your audio video off please guys hemant okay let us start so what i was talking about if you look at k2 and the deep out of the money call option deep out of the money call option look at the tail the what does this tail represents that the implied volatility is higher as compared to your log normal probab log normal distribution that means whatever bsm model assumed in reality the probability is higher that means there is greater chance of being in the money right if your tail is fatter that means your probability is very higher do you all agree with that logic if your tail is higher that means there is more probability at the tail which indirectly we can connect it back that if there is more chance of being in the money the volatility should also be higher for that side the tail side i am assuming that everybody is with me okay the same logic can be explained by looking at k1 by looking at k1 okay the same logic can be explained by looking at k1 now think about this from the put perspective one second so if you have a strike price over here and your s0 is over here we are talking about put is it a deep out of the money put do you realize this situation 
because now your stock will have to be higher and cross this barrier to be in the money fairly simple right coming back to the diagram now think about this for a deep out of the money put option look at the tail the implied volatility that that distribution the implied distribution is giving you fatter tail that means there is more probability of being in the money as compared to which is assumed by the uh, black scholes model that essentially means there is more implied volatility on the tail side i have been explicitly very slow when talking about these two tails okay all good now zooming out i want you guys to read this entire part okay and focus on this section the last part there is also one more slide next slide which is going to get connected the first this part is deep out of the money call option deep out of the money call option for the fx shiva i'm answering to your query for the fx on both the tail side okay the log normal is underestimating that's correct it's not the underestimation of risk but underestimation of price or underestimation of probability sanjana yes your point is right it is better to use implied distribution okay as compared to log normal distribution when this entire foreign exchange part will get covered you will understand what are the reasons for this scenario happening okay i am assuming that everybody has seen this last part relatively high prices because why is the price is high because there is more probability in the tail that means there is obviously the prices will be high and when the prices are high there is relatively high implied volatility this this is explained from the deep out of the money call option part the same is explained in the next side which is deep out of the money put this side read that paragraph i'm assuming everybody has seen that paragraph and we have also seen this first diagram it's the same repeat now think about this 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 diagram which is also there in your book okay this tries to cover and highlight that at the tail side you will find the implied volatility being very high in the middle ideally slightly lower okay and also also look at this table what what they have done is they have done a comparison with log normal with the real world real world means implied which is actually coming okay and what they have seen is that when you are one standard deviation away from the average the log normal is better but as we move towards the tail log normal covers only 0% you realize this 0% but your implied volatility is giving you a higher percentage higher percentage means more chances of being in, in the money and higher implied volatility i'm taking a quick pause over here is everybody with me till here till this point this is very important for your exam yes what is the doubt one second 
yes you can ask your doubt please mention your name sir this is sanjana hmm so sir uh, when we calculate uh, from when we calculate by implied volatility the there is a higher chance of the option going in the money right but when we calculate using bsm and we uh, we assume it as log normal so why do we just you did not directly use implied volatility and then why is bsm even there if like you know okay acha okay okay one second so yeah. how do you find implied volatility from bsm but then okay yeah first you have it. the bsm then only you will be able to find implied volatility no yeah okay i yeah, got that okay any any more doubts till this foreign exchange part because there's one more section connected to foreign exchange why we see this uh, tail being heavy and for the exam you should remember the tail that tail part i hope everybody is good till here okay now taking you towards the next slide one second and i will take i'll connect it back to the book also okay why do we find why do we find this heavy tail on the uh, uh, sorry the tails are very heavy for the implied distribution as compared to the log normal distribution there are two reasons for it okay the reasons are explicitly given over here when it will match the log normal distribution when the asset price movement or the change is very smooth or constant and there is no sudden jump in the price which we don't see in, in the foreign exchange market in the foreign exchange market you can see the price is moving very fast okay as per the change in the market okay and as per the economy of the country okay how importers and exporters are behaving how they are buying currency and all of it current current account deficit will impact the currency rate also so if it it if it wants to match to log normal then your volatility of the asset has to be constant and there should be no sudden jump but if you read this paragraph read this paragraph it explains that in fx market the volatility can be very high it cannot be constant it can change drastically and because of this we see a smile for the foreign exchange option the volatility smile i want you guys to read that part i'm assuming everybody has been able to read till this point now i'm zooming in on a business snapshot which is there from your institute book i want you guys to read this business snapshot also properly okay it talks about a scenario i'll come to your query jinesh it talks about a scenario that in the market okay previously everybody was assuming that okay for fx we're going to be using log normal distribution but in mid 80s which has been given over here in mid 80s few of the uh, traders they realized that okay uh, the implied volatility distribution the implied distribution is different from the real from the log normal distribution and they realized that the market price should be higher right because if there is high volatility the prices should be higher which is as compared to the bsm formula price and they made a lot of profit and then the market participants also realized that we cannot use uh the log normal assumption for the foreign market product or fx product for an exchange product and they started using the implied distribution and this opportunity got disappeared so read that entire business snapshot and give me a quick confirmation these are these were the two things which are connected to your which are connected to your foreign exchange part i'm assuming everybody is with me till here taking you towards the textbook now 
in the textbook the foreign currency option market has double star important for the exam okay they have explained the same same logic but they have not given you the diagram of the log normal and the implied distribution they have directly if you read this part read that three lines and come to this diagram this diagram is important okay this is your volatility smiles because it looks like a smile so on the extreme part you will find a higher vol implied volatility okay and you can also look at this part over here they have not taken the strike price but they have taken strike divided by stock i'll come to that logic why are they using it in some time okay so mark this diagram as star mark this diagram as star and read this paragraph mark it as star Dinesh, your query, which you are talking about, na, I'll come to the section or your point when we are going to be discussing about volatility surface. It will get covered over here, over there. I am assuming that everybody else is reading this section. Okay, the currency trader thinks that there is a greater chance of extreme price movements, and hence the distribution is higher. And empirically, empirical evidence means historically we have seen the same thing happening. Okay, and what is the reason for this behavior? Why why you see implied volatility being higher on the extreme? They have explained it over here. We have also covered the reasons. for the smile it is the same thing okay the fx volatility is not constant and there can be a sudden jump and because of which market anticipates higher probability of extreme prices and hence higher implied volatility i am going to take a quick pause over here and give give me a once you are done reading give me a quick confirmation on chat kindly complete the reading till this point and give me a quick confirmation on chat the last two lines okay these two effects this is the same point which jinesh was making that long dated option the smile becomes less pronounced long dated option the smile becomes less pronounced and for short dated option the smile is very proper in in a very simple language what what it is talking about if it's a short dated option you can see a proper smile if it's a long dated option you will find a thoda sa halka small smile all good sushil now i would i would give you that example properly when we see a table of volatility surface over there your and jinesh's query will get resolved okay taking you all to the next section which is equity option so we have seen the first product which is your foreign exchange second product is equity this both of these product can get tested in your exam so please make sure that you are good till this part let us go to this the ppt part of it again taking you towards the distribution look at the distribution the implied and the log normal the logic is same okay when we talk about k2 we are talking about deep out of the money call option but over here we see that the implied distribution is lower the tail is thinner as compared to log normal distribution 
that means the implied volatility is going to be lower okay on the right hand side similarly if you look at k1 deep out of the money put option over here in the tail the implied distribution is higher than the log normal distribution okay which essentially means which essentially means that your implied volatility is higher on the left hand side and that is the reason that is the reason we see this kind of smile for equity that is the reason we see this kind of smile for the equity marking it as star all good because only on the right and uh, left hand side we see the implied distribution is heavier in terms of the probability as compared to the log normal distribution and hence we hence see we we see the jump or implied volatility being very high on the left hand side as compared to right hand side okay zooming out and now asking you to read this section they have given you a reference of crash if you read this entire paragraph they have given you a reference of crash this is also going to be discussed in the reasons for equity option showing such a behavior that is crashophobia we will be talking about this in the next slide but before that i want you guys to read the entire section cover the deep out of the money call and deep out of the money put option read it properly sanjana explicitly see what what we can see that the put price will be higher so equity put price the market price of equity will be higher because it takes into consideration that in reality the probability is higher on the left hand side you cannot say that the put is better than call no that is not the discussion the discussion is that the real price of the put option is going to be slightly higher than the price calculated as per bsf or the log normal distribution right sanjana once you are done with this reading give me a quick confirmation so that i can take you towards the book all good let me take you towards the next or basically let me take you towards the book part and i want you to read this section also and at the start of the chapter i said that when you see something like this we have we have also called it as skew right or smirk volatility skew or volatility smirk then they have just given it a name because it doesn't look like a smile there's no difference as such okay and this also equity option since the diagram is like this it represents inverse relationship between the implied volatility and strike price why because see x axis y axis is implied volatility and this is your strike price when the strike price is increasing the implied volatility goes down that is a inverse relationship that we can see i want you guys to read the first paragraph of the book and once you are done with this paragraph let us go to the diagram which is similar to what we have seen okay for the exam this diagram is important and again they have shown you a reference of this which will be covered in the alternatives alternative method to represent volatility smiles okay there is one paragraph which is connected to the diagram which you should read till this point this 
explains the diagram that on the left hand side we see a larger implied volatility as compared to the right hand side All good. I'm assuming everybody has seen this section. Let us go towards this question. Let us go towards this question. What, what is this talking about? Okay. They are talking about foreign exchange currency. Okay. And what they are talking about that most participants are still using log normal distribution. Okay. To price the foreign exchange currency. But the, there is a risk analyst, Sally. She has performed and she knew that, okay, the log normal assumption is not good. In fact, the actual distribution is going to have a heavier tail on both left and right side. This is similar to what understanding we had for foreign currency. Now, the question they're asking is, which trade will give the most advantage in this situation? Where exactly she will benefit more if she knows that both left and right side of the distribution is having a heavier tail as compared to log novel. Come on, guys. Okay. I'll talk about the solution, right? First of all, now, when we, when we talk about long straddle, so that too, so bull spread straight away, it doesn't come into the picture. The reason being bull spread only talks into one direction. Okay. So it is, it should not be your answer. Now between long and short straddle, long straddle was this. Now they are talking about only one strike price. And what is short straddle? Short straddle is this. This is incorrect. The reason being this is incorrect because when the prices are going to be higher, then I will make losses. Why should I take short straddle? It doesn't make sense. Long straddle can be one option, but a long straddle only takes into account one strike price. As compared to this, if we have long strangle, which looks like this, when it is very deep in the money or very deep out of the money, then I'll be in profit. That is what should ideally be in a situation where your left and the right tail are heavier than your part. So your answer, they have given the discussion and all you can, you guys can read it at, at a later part, but the basic intuition should be very clear. The long straddle part. Okay, I'm moving towards the next question. Look at this question properly. What volatility smile is likely to be observed when both the tails of the stock distributions are less heavier than the log normal? Okay, in the foreign currency, in the foreign currency, we saw that both the tails were heavier. So we saw smile, but in this example, it is lower, so it has to be inverse of it. That means it should look like this. This is your A answer. Okay. Also, the next question, the right tail is heavier and the left tail is less heavier than the log normal distribution. So right tail is heavier. That means it, it will look like this. Because your only right side is heavier as compared to the left side. Right. It represents a frown. That's correct. In the presence of frown. Look at the di diagram. Your understanding has to be clear to answer this question. Okay. Both the part. Let me take you towards the reason for equity option. Why do we see such a behavior in equity? Okay. So one of the first reason, mark this as star leverage. Okay, so on the x-axis, we have the strike price. On the y-axis, we have the implied volatility. Okay, now what does leverage talks about? Okay, 
when the stock prices are going down okay when the stock prices are going down think about a company assuming that the debt is constant and your stock prices is going down so your leverage should increase do you all agree with that logic do you all agree with that logic i'll give you some numbers okay suppose there is a company which is obviously the company's asset side is equal to the liability and the liability is made out of two component one is debt and one is equity okay now suppose we have 50 debt and 50 equity which leads to 100 being my entire asset side now think about this if my equity goes down if my equity goes down then this becomes very heavy this becomes very big so if my equity goes down when you look at the company you will find that okay the debt is very high that means the leverage is very high do you all agree with that now right similarly similarly if my equity goes up if my equity goes up so my debt will become very smaller as compared to equity so it will not be a very big problem for me okay so it will it will be less risky so when there is high leverage when the equity price goes down the leverage is very high it means more risky and hence the volatility is very high and hence we see on the left hand side the volatility is very high on the right hand side why do we see volatility very low because when the equity is increasing okay the debt becomes very small it is it means less risky and hence the volatility is very low that is the first reason that is the first reason that has been given over here read that first reason leverage is basically how much debt you have and we are assuming that the debt is constant it is not changing only the stock prices are changing right jinesh rest of the people kindly read that first point so one of the reasons of having an equity product uh, showing such a behavior is this the leverage the second reason is crashophobia now this crashophobia is primarily from the 1987 market crash crash where after that we can see a uh, this equity product showing such kind of volatility smile so there is one uh, researcher mark rubinstein he has explained this with he has connected this behavior that okay before october 1987 we could not see such behavior but after 1987 we have been able to see this because only because of crashophobia because market is afraid of the next crash so what they would do is they would price the product slightly higher for the lower equity side you can read the section traders are concerned about the possibility of another crisis and hence what they do is they mark the price slightly higher for the product or situation where the stock price will go down that has been covered the second reason and the same the same two reasons are explained in the book mark both of these reasons as star and i want you guys to read this part also just as a refresher and revision mark both of them as double star very very important and once you are done till here give me a quick confirmation on chat
Okay, answering to the query, there's a query with respect to the last two lines of leverage. Now, see what they are talking about. Lower the volatility. This lowers the volatility of the underlying asset. All else being constant, there is an inverse relationship between volatility and the underlying asset. What does it mean? When the asset prices are going down, the volatility is very high. When the asset prices are going up, the volatility is down. Inverse relationship. Right? Give me a quick confirmation, guys. Are we good till here? Okay. We're starting out with this first question. The market price deviation for put and call for Black Scholes model price indicates what? Market price deviation for put and call for BSM model indicates what? We did the first section of this chapter. We talked about that the pricing, dollar pricing error is same, which also tells me that implied volatility is same for both of them. So it means equivalent implied volatility for both of them. Right? Perfect. So first question is good for all. Moving towards the second question. An empirical distribution that exhibit fatter right tail than the log normal distribution. What would that indicate? Right hand side or right tail is fatter for empirical distribution as compared to log normal distribution. So where exactly the volatility is going to be higher? It's going to be higher for high strike prices, right? Because they are talking about the right hand side. All good. C part. Let us go towards this D part. Compared to at the money currency option, out of the money currency option. Currency option, both the side, heavy tail. Exhibit which of the following volatility trait. Third question. Read the, read the part properly. Yes. A lot of you guys have been able to answer it properly. It means D. Because on both the side, the implied volatility was higher. Right? For the currency option. Let us go to the fourth question. What is there in this fourth question? Which of the following regarding equity option is true? Okay, is first, first option correct? There is higher implied price volatility for away from the money equity option. Is it correct? Because in equity option, we saw something like this. So when they are using the word away, it means for both the side, right? It means for both the side. So this is incorrect, right? Let me talk about this C point compared to log normal distribution. Trader believes that the probability of large down movement is similar to large up movement, which is incorrect. B part crashophobia suggests actual equity volatility increase when, when stock price decrease is crashophobia saying that the volatility is increasing. Actual, read this line properly. This is incorrect. This is incorrect. The answer is D. Increasing leverage at a lower equity price suggests increasing volatility. This was the reason for the volatility smile. Oh, sorry, the volatility smile for equity. Because when the stock price goes down, the leverage increases, your risk increases, and it, it, it primarily means your implied volatility is very high. So your answer is D. Are we guys good till this question part? Give me a quick confirmation on chat. Well, good. Thank you. Now, there were, there were certain queries at the start that uh, at the X axis, we can, we have seen. Yes, Dinesh, what is the query? Yes, Dinesh. Uh, sir, uh, for the 4B option, the pressure for suggests suggests that the actual equity volatility increases when the stock price declines. Okay, so when the stock price are declining, uh, the volatility would be low. No, I want you to read this line. Solution. 
pressurophobia idea is based on large price decline okay they are not talking about volatility decrease increase right okay all clear okay so it is only about the decline in the price of the uh... crashophobia doesn't talk about volatility it only talks about that the, when the prices are going down what is happening right okay the asset price basically yes okay okay so moving towards the i am assuming everybody else is good till here so i am moving ahead the next section okay the alternative way so at the start there, were, there was a query that okay when in the x axis instead of strike they they are using strike by stock now why are they using the logic is over here i will explain that logic now suppose if i am creating a volatility smile with strike over here and implied volatility over here so if suppose think logically if my stock price and suppose this this obviously starts from zero and i have created till 100 okay if my stock price is lower lower over here so my volatility smile i am i'm taking into consideration the fx part it can be similar for equity the it will look like this because my current price is over here so i will create a smile as of that price okay but if my if my stock price is higher the smile will be over here right that means wherever the stock price is moving my smile will move there is no it is not constant whichever product i am looking at the stock price what is the current stock price depending upon that the smile will be created is everybody okay till here hence hence it is not stable to make it more stable what we can do is we can take x divided by stock when we take x divided by stock okay it will become stable why because it will be from 0 to 1 or 1.5 that range right if the if the if we are if we are saying that the k by s0 is 1 that means my strike price and the s0 is same that means we are at at the money part do you agree when when we are closer to zero when we are closer to zero that means my numerator is slow, smaller and my s0 is bigger then only i will move towards this side fairly simple Why, when will i move towards the right hand side when my numerator is bigger and my denominator which is my s0 is very small right so this helps me to bring it more stability in my diagram in my graph so the first way to do it is this okay i can create k by s0 which you have also seen in the diagrams which is there in the book now in many cases what we do is in many cases instead of k by s0 they take k by f0 also on the x axis on the x axis so this can be one variation of the x axis there can be one more variation we can also take delta i hope you remember delta was between 0 to 1 the call delta negative 1 the put delta was again 0 to negative 1 but the logic is that it acts as a percentage right so we can use delta also on the x axis so these are just variations that we can see these are just variations that we can see with respect to the x part i'll take you towards the book now i want you to read the first paragraph
I am assuming everybody has read the first paragraph. Let us go towards the second paragraph. What they are saying that instead of taking k by s zero, we can replace it with k by f zero. Also, a lot of traders they do this. Also, this is just a variation. Okay, in the exam they might not test you on this, but this is just for your information that they are highlighting. So instead of k by s zero, they are taking. There are people who are taking k by f zero also to create the volatility smiles, and also there are people who use option delta. On the x-axis, that is being covered over here. Read that section. All good till here. I am assuming that everybody is with me till this point. I am moving towards the next section. Yes, this this line, right? so what they are saying that instead of using s0 traders are sometime more confident on f0 that means the future price so instead of taking the stock price they feel that f0 gives them a better picture of what is going to happen in the future so instead of taking k by s0 they are taking k by f0 it all depends upon what is your perspective about the market right bhavya taking you towards this section the next section now over here they have explained you two different things okay first is a volatility term structure okay now what is what is this volatility term structure talking about if you create so till now till now we talked about volatility smiles okay so when we talked about volatility smiles we had x axis being strike price and the y axis being your iv implied volatility but when we talk about volatility term structure now by looking at this word term structure you would realize that this is something related to maturity so on the x axis you are taking maturity and on the y axis you are taking implied volatility that is the difference okay i want you guys to read this part and also when they are referring to this short dated volatilities are higher and it's an inverse function of the maturity i will explain this point when short dated volatilities are high okay why exactly it is being mentioned and this is the same point which i think one or two people were asking initially and i said that when we look at the table we will be able to understand it properly volatility term structure okay then there is one more concept which is volatility surface what is volatility surface it's a combination of term structure and smile that means now it's it's kind of a 3d diagram okay it's kind of a 3d diagram because we are taking both we are taking the strike and the maturity and we are trying to map the implied volatility so it's basically combination of volatility smile and volatility term structure that creates a volatility surface so in reality it's a 3d diagram okay now i will take you towards that table okay now everybody on the screen can you guys see that table okay it's a volatility surface okay there is one aspect okay which is this k by s0 this is coming from your volatility smiles and can we see maturity over here it is coming from volatility term structure 
Okay. Now, now if I look at this diagram or if I look at this table, okay, like this, for one particular, if I keep my k by s zero as constant, and if I look at only this side, okay, can we look? This is primarily, this is primarily your volatility term structure. Is everybody able to register this? We are keeping k by s zero as constant, right? Because what was volatility term structure? On the x-axis, it was time maturity. That is what is happening. Can we see that? I want confirmation from people. Right. Similarly, this is also a volatility term structure. If you look at this table properly, right. Now, if I if I want to show you volatility smiles if i see in this diagram volatility smile is also there but then i will have to keep the term structure as constant right so if i look at this this is my volatility smile keeping one month as term structure similarly this is also my volatility smiles all good i i want you guys to visualize okay now there was one point which i which i said at the start okay which is being now explained in a clear manner look at the first month look at the first month the volatility smile okay for a short dated maturity option okay is more pronounced as compared to long dated Check the first month and check the fifth month. Check the first month and check the fifth month. When I'm going to draw a volatility smile for the first month, okay. See the numbers: fourteen point two, thirteen. It is going by going till twelve, and then again it is going up till fourteen point five. So can we say that the volatility smile is going to be something like this? Is everybody okay? It will start. Let's say fourteen point two, and it will go till twelve, and again it will go till fourteen point five. There is a very pronounced smile. It looks like a smile, perfect. But if you if you check this part, the fifth year part, it starts at fourteen point eight, goes till fourteen point four, and then fifteen. So can we see that the smile is not very perfect? It will be like this: fourteen point eight, fourteen point four, and fifteen. that is what i was explaining in the first part and if you go back and cross check that line which is mentioned it talks about the same thing that the volatility smile is more pronounced when it is saying more pronounced you can explicitly see that smile for a short maturity option as compared to long maturity option right perfect there is one more point to observe that if i if i look at volatility term structure okay the volatility is increasing with time volatility is increasing with time we can check this i'm just zooming in again can we see that from 14 if i look at the first column 14.2 to 14.8 third column 12 to 14.4 it is increasing right now in this example in this example we have seen that historically that volatility is the implied volatilities were lower so if you look at this 14.2 13.2 they were lower and hence the higher maturity is increasing that is being covered over here i want you guys to read both the points properly read this first point implied volatility tends to be an increasing function of maturity when the short dated options are historically low which has been explained properly in this table 
okay so if the short dated volatilities are lower then as the time grows your volatility will increase which is properly explained in the diagram but if the volatility short dated volatilities are very high then the long term it will go down this is nothing but mean reversion that has been explained in both the point both the points talks about mean reversion is everybody read that two point and give me a confirmation on both the section on both the points why are we saying it is mean reverting okay because if historically it has been low it will go up if historically it has been high it will go down that is why it is we are calling it as mean reverting right jinesh i am i am moving further okay one more line which we should read what is volatility surface it is a combination of smile and term structure we have explicitly talked about it okay let me take you towards the book so we have we have covered over here right when the short dated volatilities are high the volatility tends to be an inverse function of maturity what does it mean that if if the short dated volatility is very high as we increase the maturity the volatility will come down right when the short dated volatilities are very low volatility tends to be an increasing function of maturity what does it mean historical volatility is lower due to mean reversion the volatility should increase i hope everybody is able to connect back okay that's the reason i was waiting for that table let me take you towards the further part okay read this section so lot of traders they don't use the bsm model directly into the market they use bsm model to calculate implied volatility so that they can take a decision whether to enter into the trade or not okay read this paragraph they're talking about the same thing and they are also connecting a point that they might be using different different models so one of the model is black shoes model definitely there are different models available in the market so if the model is changing the model so if the trader is changing the model to identify implied volatility that can lead to some error that has been also covered over there as the objective is to make sure that whatever trader is taking decision over a period of time is relying on only one model so the focus has to be on the consistency rather than quickly changing in a nutshell what this paragraph focuses on the trader wants to use a model which gives him closer price as compared to the actual price that means the error has to be lower this is just a commentary added post your volatility smiles discussion the next part the next paragraph is your option greek okay now when we are talking about option greek why first of all why are we discussing about this so we have in level 1 we have talked about option greek delta gamma theta omega rho so when your volatility is changing okay your all of these greeks will also change because when we looked at the formula of these calculation for example delta which was your nd1 and in that you had d1 d1 included your sigma so primarily when the volatility is going to change heavily the greeks that you are calculating will also change that is why this this paragraph or this reference is being made and they are talking about what are the reasons or how how should we deal with this change in greek that are being that is being covered over here so read till here till the first paragraph
I'm assuming everybody has seen that part. Now, how do we make sure when the, when when we are using implied volatility, your Greeks calculations are going to change? So there are two primary guidelines that we have to follow. Okay. Now remember the part K by S zero. Okay, K by S zero over here. Increase in equity price. Okay, will lead to decrease in the ratio of this. Strike price divided by equity price, okay, and as well as increase in volatility. What does it mean? When we look at the diagram, when we look at the diagram, this is suppose K by S zero. When your S zero is very high, your equity is very high. That means you are on this lower side, right? For the equity option, what was the vol implied volatility diagram? It was like this. That means when your S zero is increasing, okay, over here. Your implied volatility is also increasing. That is being covered over here. Read this first first point. Right. Everybody okay with the first point? Okay, one more. The second point also connects back to the equity. The figure fifteen point two, what they are referring to, is basically your your equity option figure. Okay, and the second point, what they are saying is that equity price and volatility exhibit negative correlation, which primarily means that the diagram will move. Okay, the entire curve will move down. Can we see that? As a result, the entire curve will move down. What does it mean? Suppose if this is my x-axis, okay. If my equity prices are going down, this is my diagram, right? The volatility diagram. This diagram will keep on moving because my equity prices are going down. If my equity prices are going up, the diagram will keep go come to the right hand side. So it basically tells me that because we are using The, the equity prices are going down, or the equity prices are changing because of which the diagram which you see will keep also keep on moving. That is what the second point highlights. You can read this. As a result, the entire curve will move down when the equity prices are increasing. Why? Because it is k by s zero. When the equity prices are increasing, your entire ratio will go down. That means you are going to the left hand side. When the equity prices are going down, your entire diagram will go towards the right hand side. Okay, so these two things you have to remember with respect to the implied volatility affecting the Greeks. These guidelines you have to remember. Generally, they don't test this. Okay, and also there is a very small discussion over here, which is slightly offbeat, which they are talking about delta. Why delta? Because in the x-axis, in some of the Variations that we have seen on the x-axis, instead of using k by s zero or k by f zero, we use delta also. Okay. Now, why are they talking about this? Because Black-Scholes model also employs delta in a way. Okay. Because it it gives you an idea about how exactly your stock is behaving with respect to uh, the option price is behaving with respect to your stock price or the underlying asset price. So they have given you a lot. They have given you a small commentary with respect to minimum variance delta. That means delta, which is used in the model, which gives you very very uh, closer price of the option as compared to the market price. That has been just a small commentary over here, which is not very important for the exam. I want you guys to read this entire part till this section and give me a quick confirmation on chat.
Are we good till this point? Give me a quick confirmation, guys. There is a last section over here which talks about the price jump. Okay. Now this is a slight variation in terms of the volatility smile. Okay. We can see volatility frown happening. Okay. We have till till now we have just covered the volatility smiles. Okay. Jinesh answering to your query. This last paragraph need not worry about from the exam perspective. What they are explicitly saying is that there there is a point in terms of a delta. when we use delta as a reference for the x axis okay there can be a point where we can find the implied volatility which will lead to lead us to very closer to actual price that means the error as compared to the black scholes model price is going to be very very low that is why we are referring it as minimum variance delta connected back to minimum variance hedge ratio in your level 1 which minimizes your hedging error the same way connecting it back to price jump now what they are explicitly highlighting over here that if we see a asset price jumping okay how does it impact your volatility okay so if you look at a diagram if i'm not wrong they have now oh, one second okay we can look at this diagram now suppose we know that the stock price is currently at 50 and because of some news it can go either 8 dollars down or 8 dollars up but we are not sure which direction it is going to move okay so we have in this diagram we have shown a log normal distribution which is over this okay and the real now this real distribution is bimodal why why we why are we saying bimodal because both the points are highest the probability is higher for both the points because we can see both the situation equally happening probability of both 8 dollars going up 8 dollars going down after the news there is an equal probability so we are referring it as bimodal distribution so your actual distribution becomes bimodal and because of which what happens because of which you can look at this implied volatility situation at a lower strike price and at a higher strike price implied volatility goes down but in between implied volatility is very high implied volatility is very high and hence we see something like this a frown and they have given you the similar example 50 dollar moving 8 dollar down Or eight dollar up. All good. The diagram which we see is something like this. And that is why we are. This is just a variation that they wanted to highlight that every time it is not going to be frown. They, so every time it's not going to be smile, and they have tried to. connected back giving you a situation that there can be when there is a price jump expected such kind of frown can also be seen in the volatility smile diagram which is being connected over here and explained over here there is a table from your garb book which connects back that implied volatility is very very low for deep in the money and deep out of the money but for at the money and near to that the volatility is very high and that is also been covered in your book okay i want you guys to read this entire section okay which is connected over here kindly read this paragraph see multiple jumps obviously will lead to very weird shape of the volatility smiles but they have not got into that detail they have just explained you only two jumps primarily or two scenario where the probability is very high you can look at now this is bimodal you can have trimodal also okay or multiple modal distribution obviously it will have an impact on the distribution 
uh, the volatility smile. It will not be a plain straight curve. It can have jumps also in between. Read the first two paragraphs. All good. I'm assuming everybody has read, read this part. You can connect back to this diagram, the same diagram, x-axis. This is volatility smiles diagram, but it looks like a frown. Okay, so when there is a sudden jump, that means equal probability of going up or going down, it can lead to a frown-like situation in your volatility smile. Right. Let me take you towards this question. When evaluating the impact of volatility smile on the calculation of Greeks, which of the following statement is most likely correct? What do you think, guys? Which of the following statements are correct? Most likely. Okay, a lot of people are saying D is correct. This is incorrect because we talked about negative correlation. And also this one, increase in equity price will lead to increase in volatility. We talked about this, the diagram. And over here, K by is zero. So both first and second is incorrect. What is the C part? The minimum variance delta will be higher than the Black-Scholes model. Is it correct? Because we read that the black shoes are is, is having the higher one. Why D? Equity price changes. The effect from movement in the implied volatility curve up or down dominates movement along the existing curve. It primarily means that whatever is that current behavior, okay, when the equity prices changes, okay, it has a higher impact as current to the existing curve. So this is actually the wording is not written in a very easy, understandable manner. I will take you towards the solution. Now we have already seen the solution for the first part. Now, when you look at the solution, read this line. Right. Because this is also connected to the first point, which is the correct answer. When the equity prices change, the effect from the movement in the entire volatility curve tend to dominate the moment. That means, like I said, equity volatility, if the stock prices are going down, your curve will go down. Okay, if the stock price goes up, your curve will go up. This is also connected to negative correlation point. There is one more question which I wanted to take, take you through. Look at this question. There is a European call and a European put option. Both have same strike price and time to maturity. The call is having a volatility of 30% and the put is having the volatility of 25%. See, ideally the implied volatility for both of them should be same. But we see that the put volatility is lower and call volatility is higher. What would you do? What position would you take? Come on guys, what do you think is the answer? See your put volatility is lower. That means the price, see if there is high volatility, that means the price will be higher, will go higher, right? But put volatility is lower. Right. Similarly, your call volatility is higher. 
So you will have to take positions in call and put. And I'm taking you towards the solution now. Read this. Why are they referring about this? Put call parity. So when your put volatility is low, okay, it should ideally have been 30, okay, or in between basically. It is very low. So ideally it will increase, right? Ideally it will increase. So your you should buy the put side. That means this side. Okay. And the call side is very high. So when we talk about arbitrage, okay, when the volatility is very high, it will ideally come down. So you will sell this side. Now, see, generally they don't talk about this bond, zero coupon bond aspect every time. And then they're only referring to this that you have to sell. Yes, Anusha, the answer that you have put in is correct. Okay. So we have completed this chapter.